So Sanchit, 2020 was a terrible year. Covid, Donald Trump kicking off. 2021's not really been much better either. It's been pretty bad, hasn't it? And no one's really willing to answer the serious questions. Yeah. Politicians just skirt around the issue. They don't tell us anything about what's going on. It's pretty bad, isn't it? Yeah. Don't worry, we're here for you though. We're gonna answer the question you've all been wanting to know the answer to. Why did Varun become a radiologist? No one's been asking that, have they? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to go. <laughs> This is actually the first video in a series of videos where we talk to people in different specialties and just find out how they ended up getting where they are yeah. um, and how they're finding things. Yeah, especially because there's such a variety of different doctors, we thought we'd shed some light on that. Yeah, there's such a big difference between different types of doctors yeah, out there. Yeah. There is this stereotype that, oh, if you're a surgeon, you're like this, mm. or if you're a GP, you're like this. Yeah. yeah. But I think that, especially nowadays, that stereotype mm. is breaking down yeah. uh, and you find all sorts of weird people doing all sorts of things you wouldn't expect them to do. Yeah. Should we get straight into it? Medical school, tell me about it. Where did you go? Well, mate, you already know where I went. I went to the best one. I went to the best medical school. Imperial. Say it. You no. To... No, I went to, I went to Newcastle. I graduated in 20, 2016. After that, I just fancied moving away from Newcastle. Mm. Not because I didn't like it, but just wanted a slightly bigger city, Fair enough. Uh, but equally I didn't want to move to London. I know you're from London, yeah. so no offence, but I didn't want to live in a shed. Options were Manchester or Liverpool, and Manchester is just a better known city, mm. so applied here and thankfully got a place. Little known fact, it's the most popular city for Londoners outside of London. Oh, don't, don't bring that London stuff over here, mate. <laughs> just leave it down there. <laughs> so a lot of Californians have moved to Texas. Yeah. So it's like I think that. it's for very different reasons. And if London had, what, a 60% tax or whatever they want to put in, then I think a lot of people would end up leaving. Yeah. Vote conservative. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke. No political affiliations over here. <laughs> Suddenly, you go from being that medical student who's skulking in the corner, Yeah. getting in everyone's way. You just kind of get ignored a little bit. Try not to make too much eye contact with anyone. Kind um, of half an hour late. Does anyone really mind? I don't think they know you exist a lot of the time. Yeah. But yeah, suddenly you go from being an absolute spare part mm. to day one, I remember rocking up while I was in a medical job. My consultant's not there. My SHO, so my senior house officer and my registrar, so both my seniors aren't there. They're at induction all day. Classic. Classic NHS. <laughs> and I've never done a ward run before. And the nurse is just like, yeah, so you're doing the ward run today? I guess I am. 30 patients started the ward round. I remember it getting to three o'clock and uh, seeing six patients. <laughs> I mean, I've done all the jobs for them. No, sorry, I saw eight patients, eight patients. That's not bad, only 22 more to go. I should also add that in between me doing the ward round, mm. we had three separate inductions. Oh. I remember being sat there in fire safety, <laughs> just watching some guy tell me what type of uh, fire extinguisher to use. And I'm thinking, I've still got 27 people to see <laughs> on this ward round. Uh, thankfully, um, at three o'clock, my SHO's two of them showed up. So they mm. finished their induction and they were very conscientious people. So instead of going home an hour early, they oh, just thought- you're really lucky that. Oh, mate, tell me about <laughs> so it. Lucky. Honestly, I have never in my life been so happy to see somebody. <laughs> yeah, I told them that, look, I've seen eight patients. There's 30 patients on the ward. Um, they were very nice about it, very supportive. So we finished a bit late, I think six. Mm. It's still not terrible. You know what? It was quite funny in retrospect. Even at the time, it yeah. was fine. No one was super unwell. Um, it was a good experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that was my first day. It, in my head, it's just like an extension of uh, being in un university, except you're getting paid and you have a lot more responsibility. And my F1 and F2 in general, I really enjoyed it. So we had a really good group of people. Mm. Everyone got along. There was a lot of going out uh, when you could. It's a good hospital to be in. They gave you a good response, good amount of responsibility, mm. and they also were there to support you if you needed it. Yeah. And my first job was a medical job. Then I had, I think, a surgical job, so colorectal surgery. Okay. Which was busy. Mm. Sometimes there'd be two of us as juniors on the wards, and we'd have. I remember having on one occasion fifty patients. Really enjoyed it. Everyone got along. Mm. It was good fun. Some late and busy days, it but happens. it happens, doesn't it? And then after that, I had A and E. So that was my F one. And then in F two, I did upper GI surgery. Okay. So. When I did colorectal surgery, I kind of thought in the back of my mind, 
maybe surgery is something I want to do, mm. which did surprise me because I never thought about it during medical school. Right. So and then I did open GI surgery where you have a lot more responsibility. Mm -hmm. You go to theatre a lot more, at least I did, I was very lucky in that. You go to clinic now and then, which was great. And that kind of cemented my decision at the time, yeah. that yeah, I think I'm going to do surgery. I finished on Obs and Gynae, did, didn't think about doing Obs and Gynae, I'll be honest with you. That was second bottom only to peds, not for me. I've never done peds, I had a little bit of involvement with peds when I did ENT, mm. and it was always just really scary when I went the peds was. Oh, it's terrifying. Yeah. I, I think it's a, it's a scary specialty. Yeah. Because in my head, I'm as useful at treating a kid as I'm at treating a dog. Yeah, it's like being a vet. Yeah. Because they can't tell you anything. They can't tell you anything. All their observations are the vital signs are completely different. Yeah. Heart rate, 150. Is that normal? I don't know. <laughs> Peds is a whole different animal. Yeah. I've always wanted to do some teaching. Mm -hmm. So I got a teaching job as a medical demonstrator at one of the local medical schools. Oh, right. So teaching some anatomy and mostly clinical skills. Yeah, it was good fun. Gave me an opportunity to brush up on my anatomy, which I'd yeah. need for surgery. I managed to do my Part B at MRCS at that time as well. And then it essentially gave me another year to build my CV. So did you do that job for a year then? Did that job for a year. Okay. So I did that job and alongside of it, I'd local me in any of the weekends mm -hmm. just for some extra money because the pay yeah. wasn't that great in that job. Yeah. And during that time, I applied for surgery. Basically the way it works for surgery is you apply in November to start in the August the year after. Yeah. And I applied and you apply nationwide and hopefully you get a job where you want. Mm -hmm. Otherwise people move. Um, and I got a job outside of Manchester mm -hmm. and I didn't want to move basically. So now I'm a bit stuck. At this point I still want to do surgery, but I'm thinking what, what happens if I don't get the job I want again, where I want mm. again. Do I do a core surgical training job, which isn't my ideal job. So mm -hmm. I wanted to do urology at the time. Mm -hmm. And what if that job is somewhere else? Do I move? And I wasn't really sure if I was willing to move. Mm -hmm. A lot of my friends were in similar positions to me. Mm -hmm. So some of them had started core surgical training, got reasonably high up and then thought, nah, sack this, sack this. I'm yeah. not doing this anymore. So yeah, spoke to a few of my friends and one of them was doing radiology. Mm -hmm. And he was like, look man, I think radiology will suit you quite a lot. Why don't you do a taste a week? See if you like it mm -hmm. and take it from there. I remember thinking, what's this guy on about? Mm -hmm. Never once in my life had it crossed my mind to do radiology. You don't get that much Involvement in radiology throughout medical school no. or as kind of F1 and F2, the only involvement you get is speaking to radiologists and that's about it. Oh, and they're horrible on the phone. Yeah. To, if you are not a radiologist, yeah. radiologists come across as yeah. the worst people. Calling a radiologist as an F1 is the worst job. <laughs> Man, I remember calling some of them and getting absolutely roasted. <laughs> absolutely roasted. Anyway, he convinced me to do a taste a week. And you know what? It's great. Uh, the consultants were really friendly, first of all. Mm. Really friendly and really happy. Whenever I'd been through medical school or even F1 and F2 or yeah. even locoming, a lot of the consultants you meet just aren't very happy. Mm. They're kind of just a bit fed up. Yeah, they're just a bit fed up. And you, you kind of ask them like, oh, would you do your specialty again? And I, I, in my experience, about half of them say yes. Mm. And even then they're kind of like, mm. They always think about it. Always like, oh. There's always that, that little, would I? In my head, radiology was just looking at CT scans. Yeah, I mean, that's what I imagine it is, just yeah. looking at scan, in, scan after scan after scan. Yeah, and in my head, I was like, well, it's boring, isn't it? You just look at this thing, it's there, it's not there. Yeah. But it's great. I found it really interesting. There's loads of different modalities you can do. Mm. You can do patient-facing, non-patient-facing. You can do a mixture of both. So one of the consultants I did my taste a week with was an interventional radiologist. Okay. So I think two days a week, he'd do interventions. So nephrostomies, I think he did some vascular things, so like EVARs, TVARs. Uh, and then two, and a couple of days just doing reporting. Hmm. I was like, this sounds great. It's quite a, quite a varied job from, you know, I would have thought it's quite mm. samey throughout the week. Yeah. Just kind of, you sit in a dark room, you do your thing, yeah. just go through a few MDTs, that's about it. But yeah. that sounds like there's quite a lot of variety yeah. you can build into the job. You can, you can make of it mm. what you want, and it's very flexible in that as a specialty. Yeah. That because there's so many things you can do, you can do whatever you want with it. Mm. You actually feel like you're doing what you're trained to do. You're actually using all the knowledge you've built up over medical school, mm -hmm. over foundation training, and knowledge you're obviously picking up during radiology training, okay. and actively having to use it. Mm -hmm. Whereas for me, I thought a lot of medicine, especially when you're a junior, it's like giving some antibiotics. It's just admin stuff. It's just really, admin stuff. Yeah. It's just not, you know what I mean? You're, just, yeah. you're not doing the job you're trained for. Oh, and also it's a run through training program. Perfect. Which means basically you only apply once, 
and then you've got your five or six year program and then you come out as a consultant providing you pass your exams and all that. Yeah, yeah. You right. don't have to have that headache of having to reapply for oh. your registrar training or your higher training. Yeah, so I was like, man, this thing sounds like a, sounds like a pretty good deal. Um, maybe I should think about applying for it. Yeah, as we can tell now, radiology is what you went with. Yeah, mate. And you got it in Manchester? Yeah, thankfully. I found the radiology application process quite fair. It's, it's quite competitive still, so to put into context, I think surgery, so core surgical training, is generally one in one in three, mm -hmm. one in four. I think radiology is one in five. Obviously, something like neurosurgery is a lot more competitive as a subspecialty. Yeah. I think that's one in 12. Quite competitive still, but it's very clear cut in what you need to do. Mm. And the way the application works is split into three. Okay. So one is the MSRA exam, yeah. um, which is an exam loads of different specialties have to do. Mm -hmm. So obstetrics, GP, ophthalmology. Psychiatry. So yeah, psychiatry yeah, yeah. Um, and radiology as well. And then the other third is your application. So things like publications, mm -hmm. extra degrees, exams, yeah. um, which I've done a lot of work for that for surgery. Mm -hmm. So thankfully it transferred across quite nicely. Yeah. And then the final third is the interview, where as long as you're a normal person and you know, have good answers and prepare for your interview, yeah. it's fine. So you do MSRA and get the result for it before you have your interview. Okay, so, so you, you know generally how many marks you've already got. Oh yeah, so if you know your application is good mm -hmm. in terms of your public CV and you do on the MSRA exam, yeah. you go into the interview knowing you've basically got two thirds of the marks mm. and then it's just a matter of being a normal person. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Um, I mean, it's not, it sounds, sounds bad, but some of the people you meet, not just at radiology interviews, but even at my surgical ones. Yeah. <laughs> You just think, like, like how... Imagine if aliens came to Earth and pretended to be human. They're some of the people... I think nerves get to a lot of people as well. They oh, get there yeah. and they're just so nervous that yeah. they just can't think... They can't think straight. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it happens to everyone, doesn't it? Yeah. It's happened to everyone at, the, at, at some point or another. Mm. Um, you get those sweaty palms and yeah. knees weak and almost arm spaghetti. <laughs> I vomit on my sweat already. <laughs> you like that one? I loved it, mate. Yeah, okay. That was great. So you started in August 2020. Started in August 2020. And how's it been since then? Oh, mate, it's class. You know that Sunday night feeling you get sometimes? Yeah. That you, you, like, oh, you just don't want to go into work. <laughs> mate, I just don't want to go to work on Monday. Yeah. I have not had that once okay. since starting radiology. Even when I was doing things I liked, I mean, even when I was doing surgery and you know, next day was theatre or clinic mm -hmm. or whatever, even then I sometimes get that Sunday night feeling where I think, oh man, I just cannot be bothered going to work tomorrow. Yeah. Not had that once in radiology. The downsides are there's a very steep learning curve. Okay. And you go from being quite important and yeah. quite useful in the wards to just being like a complete spare part. Mm. I think in terms of feeling like a spare part, that does change very quickly mm -hmm. because we all go on call in ST2. Okay. And then suddenly you're the radiologist reporting yeah. everything for the hospital yeah. overnight. And there's a lot of reading to do. So the first couple of months I took it easy. But after that, I mean, m most evenings, in, especially in the run of two exams, you're doing some reading or some yeah. learning or something. Yeah, and radiology exams are notoriously quite difficult as well, I've heard. Yeah, that's what people say. I mean, the first one's not too bad, I'll be honest with you. Mm -hmm. It's not easy, but it's not unbelievably difficult. Some people I've spoken to said, oh, I revised for the 2A for a, a year. And then they said, oh yeah, after that, I just kept revising for the 2B, which is another year later. So that's two years of solid revision. Solid revision. Bearing in mind- back at uni again. Yeah, bearing in mind, you're not a student. Yeah. You're doing on calls and all sorts. Yeah. One of the things that I always thought about radiology and kind of put me off in kind of, I never really thought yeah. about radiology, but something that would have put me off it was, I think it's quite lonely because you are kind of sat by yourself yeah. for a lot of the time. Mm. You don't have that kind of teamwork that you get in other specialties. Yeah. So I was worried about that. That was my main worry going into it. Yeah. But you know what? Like I said earlier, radiologists, when you speak to them on the phone yeah. as a referring clinician can be quite nasty. Mm. But as soon as you're on their side, mm. they're great. Okay. They're dead nice. And in fact, they're really sociable. Mm. So um, in my office, in my first job, I got a coffee machine mm. and most of the consultants would come by at lunchtime to have a coffee and we just sit there and chat. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. So it's kind of, you're, you're by yourself for the main work top period. Yeah, so when you're working, I mean, you don't want to be disturbed. Yeah. It's, I can't stress enough how easy it is to miss things. Mm. So if you're just not paying attention, and chatting to somebody in the background, mm. you're gonna miss something. Yeah. And then it's 
that mistake is there forever. Yeah. I've got a feeling radiologists get sued quite a lot. I can imagine, yeah. Because if you make a mistake- There's nothing to hide behind. If you're not reporting, you're either doing ultrasound or intervention or mm. MDT, which is you're with people. Yeah. It's mm. definitely not unsociable. So you're enjoying yourself. You're not completely by yourself, but this is the big question. Bro. Okay. In 20 years time, yeah. when robots have taken over the world and AI is the big thing, will you have a job or will a computer just be able to do everything that you're doing right now? Well, by then we'll have a million subscribers on YouTube, okay. so I won't need a job. Fair enough. I'll be a YouTuber in Dubai. Fine. Is AI, is AI gonna take my job? No. It might reduce your workload, mm -hmm. which I'm not gonna complain about. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, you're always gonna need a human to put all the information together because that's what people don't realize about radiology is you're not just looking at a scan and making a black and white decision. Yeah. It's the imaging findings put together with the clinical information mm -hmm. and you're the person has to put it together to say, okay. is this a fracture? Is it a tumor? Yeah. Is it benign? Is it malignant? Yeah. And a computer can't do that. Okay. It might help you to make that decision, yeah. which is great. I'm all for that, but it's not going to take my job. Okay. And it's not going to be doing interventions, is it? Fingers crossed for you anyway. I mean, I'll be honest, if it's doing interventions, the Skynet has fully taken over. <laughs> so, obviously with radiology, you can specialise in different areas of the body, is mm. that how it works? Yeah, yeah. Is there anything that particularly caught your eye so far? The first decision you need to make in my head is, do you want to do intervention? Yeah. Or do you want to do diagnostics? Mm -hmm. Now, I do like doing procedures. And the thought of doing vascular intervention is really cool. Yeah. Like when you think of cutting edge medicine, I cannot think of anything that is more cutting edge than vas uh, vascular intervention at the moment. Okay. So I haven't done it yet. I'm waiting to do it. You tend to do it in your more sort of senior years yeah. before you sort of specialize later on. Mm -hmm. If I like it enough, I think that's something I would consider. Okay. But the big, the big downside is it's a very different lifestyle. And if somebody's bleeding at two in the morning, Got to be a hero, mate. And you don't want to deal with that when you're like 50 years old. I mean, that's 50. I could argue I might even still want to, but when I'm 60, yeah, probably 70 by the time we're like. That's what that's what I'm thinking. Can you can you imagine you're there like bleeding to death, and some old guy with like a tremor is there like, don't worry, <laughs> like I've been doing this for 40 I've years, been doing this for many moons. <laughs> so yeah, that that's that's that is the only thing in my mind. Yeah, that I can see as a drawback of doing it. Okay, I have to like it enough, basically. Yeah, and I haven't done it yet. Okay, fair so, enough. So. That's the first decision you need to make. And then yeah. if you do diagnostics, for me, I find GI really interesting. GI radiologists, from what I've seen, tend to be very involved with the clinicians. Okay. So you're very useful to them. Yeah. They're always coming down to you saying, you know, this is post-operative mm. problem or I don't know what's going on. Can you help me? Yeah. And I like that. Okay. If, if it's even crossed your mind, just do it. <laughs> like, honestly, I can't tell you how much of a good decision this has been. And I remember somebody else saying this to me, saying, oh mate, it's the best thing I've done in terms of my career. Mm. I'm thinking like, why are you so enthusiastic? Mm. But like I said before, I just never get that Sunday night feeling. Like I'm okay. always looking forward to going to work. Mm. If you don't like anatomy, maybe it's not for you. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed the video guys. If there's any other medical specialties that you guys want to know about, mm -hmm. because we're doing a whole series on them, comment in the box down below what specialty you want. Yeah. I think between us, we know most of the main we should be able to get hold of most specialties yeah if you start picking some really obscure ones then it might take us a bit a bit of time to get to that point but i'm trying to think i think i even know a histopathologist microbiologist i don't know any microbiologist no one wants to be a microbiologist i mean microbiologist. i've got the bnf <laughs> shots fired um, <laughs> but yeah comment in the box down below what specialties you want to hear about next yeah. hope you enjoyed the video until next time see you later